Hi, I'd just like to welcome you to first year predominantly, but also to this as an introduction to the core elements on the room. So basically what you're going to be seeing over the next few minutes is a brief introduction to the core elements, which will make up a basis for all the investigation and of the project that you're about to be involved in, and which will be an integral part of your develop, development and your assessment over the next few months in here. So it's also an introduction to some of the staff who will be working with you over the coming weeks. So the core elements that are going to be addressed in the next thing are 2D studies, 3D studies, digital ideas development and research studies. And it's important that all of these areas that you have an understanding of what's expected in these and of what happens within these areas as these are going to make up the, the core of your investigative journey for the next few months and also they are the core of the accessible component of what we will be looking for at the end of this. So the area we're going to address now is just 2D studies, again an area I presume at this stage that you are all familiar with and certainly at this stage I imagine all of you will have had some interaction with 2D studies, otherwise it would be very unlikely that you would be sitting here watching this at the moment. So if you look at it, this is any imagery produced on a flat surface made with any medium that will take onto this surface and leave a trace. And this encompasses practically every element of art making at some point but predominantly we're going to look at maybe drawing, painting, print, photography, digital media, collage, assemblage and or any combination of these elements. So if we take drawing at the moment we look at it, this is on, on lots of levels the centre of everything. Um, it is where initial ideas development come from and so you're going to see with sketchbooks and with notebooks and with note taking how this happens through to the finished article um, and all the investigative procedures that happen to it. And you'll find that the, a lot of this happens in the development of all the other areas. So if you're going into 3D, then 2D predominantly will have happened before that happens on it. So you'll take a drawing in its sort of vast range of what it comes in and the wide variety of it is. And what we want you to try and understand when you're looking at this is that there is no fixed sort of parameter on what kind of drawing can be done and how you do it. And that it comes in all range of things from very finished studies right through. But this will all be looked at in the seminars that you'll be doing next week, um, which will deal with drawing in particular and, and deal with the variety and the range that it comes in. And this leads us straight into painting, which obviously comes in a myriad of forms and techniques and a whole range, but it has the same immediacy that it continues with the direct physical interaction that you have from drawing is a progression straight from that. Um, from that, we look at leading ourselves through into printmaking, which becomes a slightly different thing. Printmaking has a matrix or a plate that separates it, so the interaction between the, the artist who's making it or, or, or the student who's making it um, deals with a plate, deals with working onto a plate and that transferring the image across. So a slight different progression in it and this means that the process becomes part of it as well. It is important to say that, that not all these elements are strictly confined uh, to, to, to 2D, that uh, an awful lot of these elements can be done and then put into 3D format or wrapped around objects that become things. So they, they are predominantly from this area but not solely from this area. If we look at photography, then we start looking at this as a lead on from print from the point of view that there is a mechanics and a process between the action and the result. And this is very sort of important on it, but we're still looking at a two-dimensional result that's coming out of that. In some levels, although in the digital age now, we are looking at, at a lot of photographic elements being viewed on screen. So again, it's the thing, but it's the process that sort of jumps and separates this from drawing and painting within these things. Having said that, there is the opportunity to work back onto imagery that has already been made, and this is kind of crucial because once you've made something, the idea of being able to attack it or go back into it or create it means that it opens up the realms of possibility as to what you're making and, and what it can say and what it does. So the smallest of changes and things can change things hugely in what they are. If you look at this by the Chapman brothers, this is Goya's Disasters of War. It has a very vital piece of work in its time and, and making a huge statement about work. When the Chapman brothers went back over it, um, drew back onto something that was regarded by masses, they gave it a new relevance and contemporary sort of feel to what it was without damaging its integrity. 
So on this, we might look at just the simplicity of some things you do with the scissors, with a piece of paper. You can completely alter something and create something very powerful on it. So the idea of collage, the idea of working back onto things, cutting things up, putting them together, has a huge potential. And that doesn't necessarily mean just with, with, with in, in, a, in its simplest form, which we'll see as well, but also using Photoshop and using an awful lot of the sort of digital technology that's now available allows you a huge scope to do it. So whether or not you're using digital technology or whether you're just tearing something from a magazine and using print stick to put onto it, the possibilities are endless and the way that you can change something entirely with just the simplest of moves. You can change the context that it's in and, and the sort of conceptual sort of ideas behind it is very important. Um, again, the using of processes, these things all change how things work. Another element of how you look at it is positioning. How do you how do you take something that maybe is done in a two-dimensional form, as in Shepard Fairey's posters and things, and then by putting it into a different environment, by changing where it's viewed, you again completely change the audience that's looking at it. You completely change what it's saying, what it's talking about, the sort of cultural implications of it. And all these things become important sort of elements that you look at when you're doing these things. So very briefly, in the last two slides I'd kind of like you to look at, um, they're both by students, but maybe they show some of the journey that is carried on. So this is by Chris Doolan. He started off working with, um, talking to his friends who drove hot hatch cars and, and drove around at night. Um, and then he traveled with them. He recorded what they said. He looked at the journeys they did. He photographed the routes that they were on. And then from that, he created these road signs that you're seeing in here, which were bits of urban poetry, as he saw them, put them back into the spaces that they had been traveling through while they were talking about these things, and then created these 10-foot by 5-foot images that you see here in front of you, which were then displayed back on the walls and in the gallery. So there was a route and a development of how these images came about. And it's important that that development is what you're looking at at the end, that one thing leads to another that leads to another. Likewise, in this by Sally McMahon, she went and photographed the city. When she photographed the city, she looked at the buildings that were in it. From there, she made three-dimensional elements and, and recreations of the city using the boxes. From those, she photographed them, which are the photographs you see above here, and then she dissembled the boxes and from the dissembled boxes you see underneath, she made monoprints um, of them. So this journey of going from looking at something to drawing it, to photographing it, to making sculptures of it, to reinvestigating it back through photography and then bringing it to its conclusion through print is hugely important that that's the journey that you take this on. And that encompasses 2D, 3D, digital, all the core elements are suddenly available for you to be used in the one investigation. So hopefully this gives you some indication of where you're going, and we'll see what happens next. Okay, thanks. Hello everyone, my name is Elaine Reardon. I teach here on Year 1 Art and Design, and I'm going to introduce you to a 3D Studies core element. 3D Studies involves engagement with the physical and tactile elements of our environment, these elements include form, structure, texture, volume, weight, space, and location. These elements are explored through the use of materials and processes and active engagement with the context in which they exist. Why 3D studies? It's a core element that is relevant to every specialization and a vital part of the art and design process. Elements to consider when exploring 3D um, these elements of form, structure, texture, volume, weight, space and location are explored through the use of materials and processes and active engagement with contexts in which they exist. And just to run through some examples of um, artist work, Ruth Ashwawa explores wire and form Una Burke works in leather and works very much with the structure of the body. Jessica Kruter works with clay and textured surfaces. Victor and Ralph, this piece explores volume. Francis Lam, this piece is entitled Float and investigates the weight of the material within a space. Richard Serra's Matter of Time piece 
explores space. Anish Kapoor, this piece is called Memory and explores the location. But you can see with each of these pieces that they, they overlap between the different um, elements that can be explored in 3D. So 3D studies may be seen as fine art or design. It may be small or large in scale. It may be positive or negative in form. It may be you in the space you inhabit. It may be made of any material or media. It may engage us physically or emotionally, and it may be site-specific or not. Hello. Today, very briefly, I'm going to discuss digital media as part of your core elements. So what do we mean when we say digital media? At its simplest, it's if you can view it on a computer, that's a PC or a Mac, it's digital media. So as long as you can do that, and you can think of any method to get an image to a PC or Mac, to play with that image or add sound or otherwise, then we will class it as digital media. Even if your sole purpose is to export it or to print it out at a later stage. So the equipment and hardware. Now a lot of this equipment you will already have and the rest we will be able to provide in college for you. So some examples. Compact cameras, smartphones, digital SLR, video cameras, scanners, audio recorders. So these will capture images natively as a digital format. So analog images can also be transferred. So that's a drawing or a sketch or a painting or mark making or anything else. Uh, you can photograph it. If it's a flat image, I'd recommend scanning it in at a nice high resolution. So, you've taken your image, you've created your image, you've put it on the PC. What do you do now? In first year, we tend to use the Adobe Suite as our main go-to. So that includes Photoshop, which I'm sure lots of people have heard of, if not used. It's a 2D digital uh, manipulation piece of software. You can also animate and create videos, but generally 2D manipulation. We do use Premiere Pro, which is like Photoshop for video. So we bring in video and we can alter it. We have After Effects, which will add special effects to that video. We have Animate uh, for animation and so on. We have Illustrator, so vector based. Uh, poster design and so on. Now I teach quite a number of these uh, classes on a Monday and that's available for both groups. Uh, other departments teach uh, more specialized tools like InDesign or Illustrator. So methods of delivery. So as I said earlier, uh, workshops. These will occur on a Monday, both in the morning and the afternoon, so they're available for both groups. Sign-ups will be on Moodle. Uh, that will be explained to you later on as well. We have seminars, demonstrations, visiting lecturers occasionally. So these are people who work with those tools within an industry settings who come in and talk about their work practices. Tutorials and online learning. A lot of the time during peer review I will see someone doing something uh, and I will advise them of other ways of doing it. Sometimes I'll bring them down and show them how to do it. Um, it is important to note that you do not need to have any prior knowledge of these tools. Everything is basically given to you from a beginner's standpoint. So, uh, digital media is taught across all subjects, all departments, whether it's design or fine art. Uh, most people assume digital is, is mainly for design, and while design may use it more uh, it is taught across all departments. Here are some very brief examples. So in design, and in this case animation, we have sketching done. So this is a sketch done on a drawing tablet directly into Photoshop. You could also have drawn this in pencil, scanned it in, and then later worked on it in Photoshop. Photoshop is great for playing with colour, uh, playing with brushes, textures, so on. So you can iterate and create work really, really quickly. 
Here's a preliminary animation. So this is a rough, so for timing I'll play just a bit of it so you get an idea. So that was a hand-drawn animation that was later scanned and brought into Adobe Animate and timed. So this is something in the fine art department, in this case it's photography. So students were given a photograph, in this case the Pieta, and told to reinterpret it. True photography. So here's what they came up with. So you can see it's a, a unique interpretation. Here we have sound installations. Sound installations are where students are dealing with ideas of audio, sound and space. We have video installation where they're predominantly dealing with the ideas of the image, and projection and so on. There may be sound with this, but not necessarily. So the last one then is cinema. Cinema basically takes everything that I've discussed already and puts it all together. So you have still images, moving images, uh, sketches, animation, drawings, photography, sound, sound effects, special effects, ideas of time, so on and so forth. All of these things are available for you in the college through workshops or through individual tutelage and so on. So my name's Paul Gardner. Um, you can contact me at this email address if you have any questions about any of this. Staff will be available to discuss this work in more detail as well. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name's Sylvia and I'm here today to talk to you about ideas development. So what is it? Ideas development is about exploring the many different options that offer possibilities to negotiating your project. It's basically how you're going to problem solve your ideas whilst you're in college for the next four years. So for example, if we look at this slide, we all know the answer. There's only one answer, and that's something that we all learn in school. Take for example this. What's this question? This question has an infinite number of possibilities. It can be anything, decimals, fractions, and there's no right or wrong question. For example, look at this. Would you like your pizza cut into six or eight slices? So we're going to think about this. The question that you ask determines the answer you're going to get. So you must ask the question in a thoughtful way to get an interesting answer. Have a look at this film and think about the question that you ask determines the answer you're going to get. My name is Professor Guy Gadbois, medieval castle authority from Marseille. Tell me, do you have a ring? I do not know what a ring is. Zimmer. Ah, a ring. That is what I have been saying, you idiot. Ring. Does your dear go back? No. Oh. 
Yes, Dougie. Oh. I thought you said your dog did not bite. That is not my dog. So, it's really interesting to tell things with jokes because sometimes they can ask an interesting question. Take, for example, some of these uh, illustrations from the New Yorker magazine. It's not as deep as it looks. That's only a baby giraffe. And this one here to the right says, Mom says it's safer. It's a reason for trick-or-treating. So think about that. So here are some things to consider when you're doing your project. Put things together that are not obvious and challenge assumptions. Don't always go for the most obvious or the first answer. Use all of your resources to create something that's surprising and fascinating. You don't need to be an expert. Learn it. That's one thing that Mike Fox is always stressing. Um, the college is a wonderful place for you just to learn things. We tried this and it didn't work, but here's what we learned. So the whole way through first year, we're very much interested in how you negotiate your project and how you problem solve but also when you don't learn something that doesn't work out, you learn other ways to negotiate it. Challenge your perspective and see how someone else does it. Here are some questions that you need to ask yourself. So think about your strengths. What am I good at? What comes easy to me? And where do my strengths lie? That's one way to negotiate your project. What am I really excited by? What points of reference do I use? What strategies do I use to generate ideas? These are my hobbies, my skills, magazines I'm interested in, films, videos, TV, music, sports. Before you came to art college, your idea, your hobby was art. Now you've got to find new hobbies and they in turn will help you uh, explore the world in a different way. What are my weaknesses? Um, is it to do with punctuality? That's me bad timekeeper. Am I too self-critical? That can also impede work. You think you can't do something and the idea of thinking about it can hinder your ideas. Computer skills. Do I need to brush up, my, up on my computer skills? Is dyslexia an issue? It could be because uh, a lot of us are visual learners. We just see the world in a very different way. Is there room for remediation? If I know what my weaknesses are, maybe I have to just be a little bit more conscious of them and work on them. Can I improve on things? Yes, you can. Use your knowledge and pay attention to the world around you. That means looking at other students' work. You're like a signature. Everybody negotiates the world in a completely different way, but we sign differently. Questions to ask yourself. What can I learn? How can I use my weaknesses as an opportunity to explore areas that I'm unfamiliar with? So there might be something that I'm a little bit tentative of, not familiar with, and that's actually perhaps a medium that might help me explore my project and that I have to negotiate with. How can I capitalize on my time here? So my peer group is really important. Your peer group are probably going to be the people that you're going to be in contact with for the next four years through the college. The staff, we have a wonderful team, the creative culture, the library resources, the workshops that we have in, in the Art College and Limerick City itself. Explore the journey. We're not interested in the final products, but rather the discoveries that you make along the way, and also your mistakes. Threats. Being complacent and not using my time properly. So that means engaging with the course. Losing drive and momentum. And if you lose drive and momentum, that's quite normal. It does happen, but you've got to turn up and invest yourself in the college course. And really important, keeping a good balance in my personal and my college life. Thank you. Hi, my name is Giordana Jaquet, and I'm going to introduce another core element of this program, research studies. This is the process of investigation, analysis, and observation and documentation of the work of established art and designers in the broader context. In the words of Jim Jarmusch, 
a influential art house film director, nothing is original, still from anywhere that resonates with your inspiration or fuel your imagination. But remember, always reference your influences. And research and uh, analyze your work related to your project is one of the main elements of the research studies. Analyze these in a broader context of contemporary art and design practice. Use your research to engage in many different activity, media, and processes that you are inspired by others. Research and record findings in your research book. It is imperative to always reference your contextual work. All research and related work must be documented and referenced in Tumblr. Now, so your research will be defined by your concept and with the help of staff, you, the, you will be directed um, to many sources of information in the contemporary art and design practice. You will engage in analysis and understanding of many materials and processes. You will create greater clarity uh, awareness and comparative obs observation of contemporary artwork. So your research studies is being aware of contemporary art and design practices. It is also about exploring how the people have taken the same subject team at the varied way they have treated it. So visualizing your research will answer questions to do, sorry, questions to do with your own work and possible new developments. This is an example of research notebook based on Ensuk or a textile designer, and it is worked and examined by the student. Again, in this slide, based on the work of Andy Goldsworthy, the student is responding uh, and analyzing the visuals. In this slide, uh, the visual language of this artwork by David Carson um, inspired the student to experiment in that type of visual language. So in your research journey, you will gain a lot of benefit from this and on work and experiences of other artists and designers. This research journey will bring you, you through the analysis of this work, asking key questions who, what, when, how, where, and respond with observation, sketches, collage, diagram. So this was gonna bring us to your Tumblr account. Your Tumblr account is gonna be your living portfolio. It will uh, uh, be a useful, a useful archive for journey as an artist. Using Tumblr will become like a microcosm of other artists and designers interested in the same topic as you you will lead a new and exciting uh, discovery um, and other influences that you can document and link as part of your research Tumblr. So it's very important to be yourself and to take risk and chances and changes as well. And also eureka moments, surprising moment, serendipity moment, just uh, you know, you might just stumble across new resources and always pick the road less traveled. In conclusion, question that you need to ask about your research. Why is this research relevant to my work? What other work am I looking at? How have other artists, designers work in tackling similar teams, projects related to your own? What kind of different medium solution have been found by people working on similar projects? Um, and also be inspired and reassured and influenced by making your own. So these are some examples of digital notebooks that you might come across. And uh, these are uh, a series of books that might help you to kickstart your research. And uh, I would like to add that all the core elements presentation are going to be uploaded on Moodle and you can access them anytime. Thank you very much. And all the core elements are going to be explained in depth during seminars and demonstration. Bye.